My name is Richard Hoy. I'm the owner of the general manager, managing director of Aqualife Products Australia that's been in the water treatment industry for 26, 27 years. My interest in water really started well before my venture into Aqualife. I owned a chemical company uh, and my interest in water then started with the effluent disposal. But my interest was further developed within Aqualife in the medical side of things. And it was from that that we gradually moved into the coffee industry, which is extremely important because water constitutes 90, 95% or thereabouts of the cup of coffee. So it has a huge impact on the quality of the finished product. The same old story, if you don't start with the right raw materials, you'll end up with the wrong result. One of the initial questions concerns, what is RO? What, what are we attempting to do? Why is it special? What makes it so unique? Water coming into any property is what we call a municipal quality grade, and it varies enormously throughout Australia. And it'll vary in accordance with what we call primarily TDS. It's total dissolved solids. It's all the excesses of minerals and salts that are dissolved within water, molecules, uh, within water itself. And some of those minerals and salts you don't want in your coffee machine or in your coffee. And what RO does is to separate those unwanted minerals and salts within the water itself from the pure water. So it's a great starting point to getting rid of the things that you don't want in water, such as the chlorine that's been introduced and excessive calcium and manganese salts and also a high level of chlorides. And those last three elements really start to cause some of the problems because your calcium manganese salts will produce your lime scale and your chlorides are toxic, really toxic when it comes to stainless steel. It will pit stainless steel. So you really want to get rid of those, those, those elements within your, your water. And the RO is a good starting point for producing the quality of water that people are aiming to achieve the result with their product. But with water quality, at least with reverse osmosis, you get rid of most of those things which you really don't want to have within your cup of coffee. You don't want water on the acidic side, but you want water with a degree of body in it to enhance the flavour of your coffee. And that can be achieved to a large extent, very large extent, with RO. And as you know, Aqualife is committed to a five stage system, five stages, and we are not going to shift off that at this stage because everything that we've looked at in terms of cutting the, the number of processes within the system has a downside. The two stages uh, pre-treatment involves one carbon treatment and the other one a carbon with a bimetal compound. And the reason why we need to go for the two is that all water has varying degrees of suspended solids, which is simple dirt, rust, mud, whatever, for clays, uh, suspended within water. And those clays or suspended solids, once covering your carbon, it becomes useless. It will not take out your chlorine in particular, which is what we're aiming for, which is why in the second pass we use a bimetal compound which has the uh, qualities of less surface sensitivity and approximately 15 to 20 times the dechlorination capacity of granular activated carbon. All major metropolitan water supplies have chlorine injected into them to control bugs. And in Australia we're very really fortunate because we, we don't suffer from cholera, those other pathogenic water qualities within this nation at all are free because it is compulsory to use chlorine within any major municipal supply. But the problem with chlorine is that you solve one problem by getting rid of it within a reverse osmosis system. But you need to be mindful, chlorine will 
perish your membrane, it'll corrode it. Because the membrane fabric is like a skin, very, very fine, very sensitive. So you must get rid of that chlorine first up, in particular. So it lays a pretty good foundation for giving the optimum life of your membrane. And your membrane, if the pretreatment system is looked after, should give you one to one and a half years life, maybe even more on occasions. It'll just be dependent on the volume of water that you're using and the quality of water that's coming in, of course. The membrane is really the engine of water treatment. It is the vehicle where it separates the, the salt uh, and minerals molecules within water and the pure water molecules and so on, the H2O. That's what the membrane really does. It's ultra fine to the point of 0. 0.0002 parts per million. It is a common factor within all membranes that they will reduce your level of TDS by around about 95%. Once it gets, uh, your membrane starts to reduce uh, less than that, in other words, 90, it means that it's on the way out. Well, for example, let's talk about Brisbane water. And I'll take a punt here, and let's say that it has a TDS across the board, which it doesn't have, of, of 280. Let's say 300 for the sake of maths. 300. Hmm? So what it means is coming off the membrane, you should be getting water with a TDS around about 15. What's left within that uh, 15 parts per million? Well, obviously it's going to be the residue, minerals and salts, which haven't been caught by the membrane itself. Uh, it'll be made up of organics as well, uh, but it's primarily it'll be your minerals and salts. People often ask me, can I just get away with using a membrane? Of course you can. There's no problems. But the problems you've got in just using a membrane is that the water coming in is going to severely contaminate or corrupt that membrane performance. That's the one problem. And secondly, membrane technology will tend to reduce water on the acidic side of the equation. The acidic side. So you don't really want water with a low pH uh, with acidic content because you're going to have then more problems with your machine and you're certainly going to have problems with the flavour of your coffee. The final two stages after the membrane treatment is what we call the polishing process. And it's there that we, we can fiddle around with varying cartridges with different media beds as to what the customer is actually looking for. And in the case of the coffee industry, the fifth stage, we use a carbon treatment again there because what we want to do is to make the water as sweet as we possibly can. And organics, the residue within the water at that stage will be dissipated with that process. So that really provides the opportunity to provide as far as we can at this stage, a consistent quality and product of your delicious cup of coffee. We often get asked, why, why do we need two cartridges after the membrane? Well, the first one is to put water, uh, minerals back into the water uh, because the water has become too pure. And if it's too pure, the probes within your uh, tanks within a coffee machine or in a combi oven won't measure the quality of water because the conductivity within the water is too low. So we need to lift it a bit. And we have one stage for that. But in the coffee industry, we become even more special because we want to put even more back in because we want to lift that TDS from around about 15 up to somewhere between 50 and 100, somewhere around about that area. If it got to 120, I wouldn't get panic stricken. And if it was below 50, I'd say, well, that's Melbourne tap water quality. That's excellent. So within those parameters, I think that you're going to be pretty safe in terms of enhancing the substance uh, within the water itself that will maximise the flavour of the coffee. Um, and the final pass is I come to organics, residue organics to sweeten the water up so that in actual fact there's nothing can detract from that 95% of water within the cup of coffee to give the optimization of flavour from the bean itself. It's, as you know, that bean is very sensitive 
And so what we want to do is to minimise the risks of any adverse uh, flavour affecting that bean. The real challenges, I think, in the water treatment industry uh, is the fact that there's water is such a dynamic product within itself. You can go from a tap over here to a tap over there and you'll have a different chemical analysis of the water. And out of the same tap, you can take a reading from a tap. When you turn that tap on, straight away you'll get a certain reading. Then you let the water run for even a minute or two and you'll get another reading. Let it go for another three or four or five minutes and you'll get another reading. It'll be changing all the time. Then you turn the tap off and then you start all over again. So here we go again. It, it is dynamic, it is mobile because water is a solvent. And whenever it stops flowing, it will increase in terms of its activity because water always wants to get itself up to normal. The purer water becomes, the more corrosive it becomes and the more dynamic it becomes in terms of its aggressive uh, corrosive properties. I often say you drop a, a drop of water on a beautifully new stainless steel plate and within a very short period of time what will you have? You'll have a little spot of rust <laughs> where that water has taken the irons and coals and manganese and everything else out of that water and added it to itself. Thank you.